In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the courses menu within Schoology. And this is really the place where you're going to spend the majority of your time when you're using Schoology. I know initially um, your courses are probably not loaded into Schoology from PowerSchool, uh, but there is a way that you can practice using your courses in the meantime. So if you are logged into Schoology and go to the courses drop down menu, there is a way here to create a course. And let's create a fake course for now so you get some experience using it um, and that way you'll have at least an active course that you can test out in the meantime um, when your courses are loaded in here from uh, power school they will appear here in this list for you to access so let's press create and it's going to ask us a little bit of information about the course and we'll have to just set some default things. So I'm going to select Conradi Junior High and I'm just gonna give the course a fake name and fill out all of the required fields. All right, so this is what a typical course looks like before anything has been added to it. Um, just to kind of give you an overview of where everything is, you have your Add Materials menu here in the middle, and basically the stream of content for the students to access will be listed here in the middle. So um, it's important to develop an organization system here for your students, um, because whatever you set up here is exactly the same view that the students will have. So what I recommend you do is actually go in and add folders here, and you can organize these folders however you see fit, um, perhaps by unit or by week. Um, and then, you know, the nice thing too is you can actually hide things. So um, over time, you know, if there's materials that they don't need to see, you'll be able to hide those. Uh, on the right here, you have your upcoming events or assignments. So as you start utilizing the calendar more and posting announcements, perhaps uh, giving the students a little update about upcoming exams or um, homework assignments that are due, those will appear here on the side. And this, um, again, it mirrors the view for the students as well, so they will see those upcoming events here. And then on the left, you have a picture associated with each of your courses. And I, what we typically do at Conready, and it works really well, is to put a picture here of your class period. Um, reason being then when the students can go to their courses drop down list, they'll see each of their class periods listed. Uh, otherwise, it may be more difficult for them to identify the course. So if you're not, uh, you know, savvy with Photoshop or you don't want to create your own, you can go to Google Images and then just search for your blocks or your periods and then they will have a lot of images here. So I'm just going to save this one for example and this will represent my first and second period. And then what I can do now is I can hover over this default image for my course, go to edit picture, and I'll be able to upload the image of that 1-2 for my first second period course. If you need to, you can edit the thumbnail if it doesn't quite fit in the space correctly um, and kind of adjust it, or you could remove the picture and replace it with something else. So that just helps a little bit. Um, it's, a, it's an easier way for the students to see at a glance um, their courses. Uh, another thing to note here is you have a menu of options off to the side. So your materials tab is going to be any folders, assignments, quizzes, tests, uh, discussion boards, any um, links to ex external sources, basically all of the content that the students will access will appear in the materials tab. The updates tab is typically utilized by the teachers to post um, announcements. So this may be, you know, don't forget to bring whatever it is to class tomorrow, study for this test. Um, you have this insert content menu where you can actually include a link in here as well. 
and um, attach files by going to this file button and you know give the students a little update on something and that update will not only appear in their home menu on the recent activity feed but it'll also appear in this upcoming events the next tab here is the gradebook and in another video we will talk more about the gradebook how to set that up and how to manage that Mastery is the place where you can go to see um, the student's performance by learning objective. So as you go and add more tests and quizzes and um, assignments to your course, you'll want to tag uh, Common Core State Standards or NGSS or C3 standards. That way, um, you know, you'll be able to see the students by mastery level, which is really nice. Badges are not typically utilized very heavily at Conradi, but they are, um, you know, an incentive for students. You can either use some of these default badges to um, uh, reward students, or you can create your own, which is really nice. So if you go to Add Badges, create your your own new badge, and then you can put in an image associated with it, and just you know, give those to students to kind of reward them. Um, you know, for whatever it is that they've achieved. You can ignore the attendance menu here in um, Schoology because we take attendance in Power Teacher. The Members tab is where you'll see all of your students in your class. So um, right now it's just me. I have my little crown, uh, which signifies that I am the um, admin of this course and all of your students when they're added would be listed here. It, disregard this access code and this access code here. Um, we use the uh, the premium version of Schoology, which will sync the students in from PowerSchool. We do not want them to use an access code to register themselves. Um, this has been done in the past without you know teachers knowing it was a, a problem and it caused some pro uh, some errors for us that we had to resolve. So just note that if a student is missing from this, just contact the tech department and let them know and they'll see about getting that student synced to your course. You wouldn't, shouldn't have to add them yourself. So uh, one thing you can do here though, which is really nice, is add as many co-teachers to this class as you want. And it does not need to be teachers that you um, co-teach with necessarily. It could be team members that you want to have an easy access to sharing resources with one another or just kind of see how another teacher has set up their course. So what you can do is go to add members here and you'll be able to search for other teachers in the building, which is nice. And then what you can do here is add that member automatically. And what they initially do is add that person as a um, student. You'll notice they don't have the crown next to their name. So just go to the gear to the right of that person's name and go to make admin. And by doing this, they become a co-teacher in the course and have the same ability to add materials and monitor um, you know, the student's progress as you. So that is the Members tab. Um, another thing too in the Members tab is you can add grading groups, which is really nice. So if you wanted to, you could go in um, and then have different groups of students receive different materials or um, you know whatever it may be just to differentiate. So you can title this and then you know obviously I have no students in this course but um, you could type in the name of the students and they'll all be added to separate grading groups. And this is very beneficial in um, especially those co-taught courses. Um, analytics is just a menu that will show you the student activity in the course. So it'll give you a little bit of an idea about how often the page is being viewed, um, comments, you know, specific students. So if you went into users, you could see which users are logging in most often and how long they're spending there. Um, not super important, but just if you wanted to have a little sneak peek into how often students are accessing these course materials. Workload planning is intended to help you decide um, based on that student's workload in other courses if you know you should give them a lot of homework or maybe kind of um, reduce the amount of work that the student 
is receiving um, because it's going to automatically kind of look through all of those students courses and see are there particular days that they have a really heavy workload so maybe you could kind of um, balance it out by giving them work on another day and then the last tab here is your power school tab and the power school tab is something that we use a lot it is um, what allows us to sync our assignments to our power teacher grade book where our report card is um, printed from and our progress reports are printed from uh, this course that i have set up is not tied to power school so we'll get into later how you would actually um, utilize this power school menu but just remember that this is here uh, we'll need to use it to set up classes and we'll need to um, you know go in here from time to time to sync assignments so back on our materials tab in the course there's something in the top right corner a button that says notifications here and this is something you'll want to set up right away when you have your courses in here um, it is going to give you a, a quick rundown of all of the different email notification settings you can have for this course. And there's probably certain things that you don't want to get an email for. Um, me personally, I wouldn't want the majority of these things checked. Every time a student submits an assignment, getting an email about it to me would be obnoxious. Um, comments on my post, I don't want an email for every comment and a user joining my co my course probably not but you know what this is personal preference so if you prefer to get a lot of emails about these things um, you know keep them checked however uh, you'll have to do this for every one of your courses to make sure it's course specific what you receive there's a menu also in here called course options underneath the picture and there's a few things just to note that are in here the recycling bin for the course is in here so if you accidentally deleted something you can restore it to the course um, there's a few privacy or info settings that you can set in here and moderated posts if you start to use discussion boards um, this is where you would determine the moderation settings so you can enable moderation that way you have to approve posts before they become um, you know live on your discussion board so this was just a brief overview of the navigation of your course and in the other videos we'll talk more about the specific material types in the course and um, gradebook as well.